Hey guys and welcome to today's painting tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to share with you how I created my latest watercolor piece titled Nephila. The word Nephila means clouds and since this painting looks a little bit like a cloud princess I thought this title was definitely fitting. Before we start though I wanted to let you know that there is a much slower 30 minute long version of this painting tutorial available for my $5 Patreon supporters. I explain my technique about how I created this piece in detail and you are able to observe my technique more closely. You can see the reference photo mock-up that I used for this painting and as always you get access to all painting tutorials available. You can find a list of all tutorials at leobard.info slash tutorials. When I started this painting I wasn't completely sure how it would turn out because my reference photo only depicted the figure in the middle of the composition and I didn't have reference for the background. It gave me the chance to use my imagination when I drew the clouds and the butterflies. I also added the two peonies to the composition as well. Since some of this work was intuitive, I wanted to make sure I was creating a beautiful painting and I started by lightly sketching out the major parts of the painting. This was different than my normal process, which involves starting with the face and perfecting it like I normally would. Instead, I focused on several major areas of the painting at once. When I began painting, I first started by focusing on the two peonies at the bottom of the painting. Though I have painted roses and other sorts of flowers before, I have never painted peonies before this image. Because it was a new type of flower, it was pretty hard for me and I had to focus carefully on them because they were pretty complicated. I wanted to create them just like I imagined them, with sharp edges and blurry gradients and I had to work carefully to be sure I got the right balance between the two styles. These flowers are dark in the center and literally get lighter in color toward the outside edges of the petals, so I had to observe the reference photo closely. When I moved on to work on the hair, I didn't want to overdo it or add too much color contrast, so I started with a light blue color and added another layer of darker purple tone to create a nice contrast and then created a balance between the two colors. Then from there I jumped around and began painting into different areas of the image until everything was filled out. I find this process is easier especially when I don't know how the rest of the painting will look. So gradually I work to fill it all in. Then I have a chance to focus on all the major parts of the painting. Since I wanted the clouds to look very loose and light, I didn't add any colored pencils to them. The focus of this painting is definitely the face, so I concentrated hard to get everything just right. The composition of the face is based on the mixture of different dolls and she also wears a headpiece containing thousands of gemstones. In order to paint these gemstones properly, I had to stay very focused. And obviously I needed to use a very small brush to fill in all of those tiny little pearls and gemstones. Every single one of them required careful attention, but it was definitely worth it because they are one of the focal points of the painting and they frame out the face. When working on the gemstones, I wanted to create dimension by adding a body shadow, which acted almost like a contour around them. Each gemstone also has one or more highlights and some of them also have different colors and I used one technique for every one of them. I also added some of the same pearls and gemstones in the sky and along her braid which trails down her shoulder. It definitely took some time but I really enjoyed doing this work. For the butterflies I decided to also paint them very lightly. In the past I would pretty much overdo every butterfly by adding a lot of colored pencil, gouache and acrylics until they looked very heavy and strong. Yet I didn't want to do that for these butterflies. I felt that they should look light and fit with the composition because everything else is very pastel colored. Obviously, by contrast, they should not be super dark or pop out of the composition. In order to get the softened effect I was looking for, I added more water to my mixed paints to get a washed out effect. So instead of using pure black, I used a light gray to fill out the wings and I added contours to the rest of the painting. As you can see, I painted on the 
lily and from there I jumped around the painted areas in the whole painting. This just allowed me to decide which parts to finish so that I could carry the whole painting forward at one time. When some of the areas began to look finished, I jumped to another area. It's like building a house in a sense. You don't just build only the bathroom and finish it, then move on to the next section. Instead, you would slowly build up everything at the same time. Sometimes I work on painting this way, but when I know how I want the painting to look in the end, I feel a bit more comfortable finishing one section at a time before moving on to the next. Bouncing around allowed me to save time because I would I was able to leave some parts looser than other ones. For the face, I only used one layer for her skin tone and then using a wet on wet technique, I added in two drops of pink colors for the cheeks. That helped to create gradients. It is super easy to mess up the face and I've done this a lot of times. Sometimes if I add too many layers, it gets too dark and I made sure not to make this mistake again here by adding only one layer of skin tone, then moving on to my color pencil technique. Uh, then I moved on to begin working on the eyes. Since this portrait is looking at us directly, the eyes have to be symmetrical, which is very, very hard to get right. I worked on both eyes at the same time to try to get them as even as possible. For the eye color, I used a range of various different colors. My preferred colored pencil brand is Polychromos, and I added different brown tones, aqua tones and purple tones as well. You can find a list of many of the colors that I use in the descriptions of the videos. To get the right tones, I find it easier to just mix all of the colors because I never see only one tone in my reference images. It is always a combination of a lot of different colors. For the inside of the eyes, I use the Caron d'Orge brand Luminous Pencils which are wax-based pencils. They are pretty opaque, which is good because at this point I noticed that I managed to make uneven eyes and irises. Thankfully, I was able to work out these small mistakes with the color pencils. This technique is very handy and I pretty much use the color pencils every time I draw eyes, since I don't always get them right the first time I make them. For the strands of hair, I used also the Corondage pencils because of their opacity. Then I used them to add more shadows in the whole composition. Next I added washes to the skin tones. And when working with skin it is important to not allow them to get too grey. Too many grey shadows and layers make everything appear dark. I have to be especially careful with greying skin tones in a pastel like painting. For this reason I didn't want too many layers in the face, except at the focal points around the face that would allow the face to pop out dimensionally. I also created dark areas along the hairline on either side of the face, so that the hair popped out. Of course, I added more details to the peonies as you can see. They were so beautiful in the reference images, but they were also super difficult to paint. I had to keep checking the reference to make sure I got the colors and dark shadows areas just right. There's no trick to getting them to look right and I just had to really focus on them as carefully as I work on a portrait. Then I refined the different parts of the painting and added some leaves here and there. I also used the colored pencils to work on the edges of the painting to tidy everything up and to help make certain parts of the painting pop out from the rest. So, that is the painting process for Nathalie. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said in the beginning, a 30 minute long tutorial version of this is available on my Patreon page for the $5 reward tier. There I talk in greater depth about my technique and it is not as fast as in this video. If you want to learn more about my work, you can go to the tutorial page on my website and there you can see all the videos that I've created for my patrons. I hope you like them. Also, prints of this painting are also available in my online shop. I have beautifully embellished fine art prints and they look amazing. I am in love with them and I hope you fall in love with them too. <laughs> you can find links to all of this in the description of the video. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Bye bye!